I'm doing something a little bit different, a little bit fun this time. So um, have you ever seen where you a new camera gets announced? And, and so what happens is, is all the YouTubers, everybody, um, everybody rushes, you know, everybody rushes over to YouTube and you see all your favorite YouTube, you know, camera people and, uh, they're all doing the first look at the camera and they're sitting there with a piece of paper because the camera's not even out yet. Nobody's even held it yet. And they're talking about how good and bad and what the camera doesn't have and has and how it performs off of a piece of paper. I'm poking a little bit of fun at it, but I'm actually in a way doing the same thing here with Lightroom. So uh, this week, Adobe announced that uh, masking reimagined inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. And it's pretty cool. It made a lot of buzz, made the rounds on the internet. You know, I, I, everybody's talking about it. And I normally wouldn't do this because again, I'm, I'm poking fun at these videos where somebody reviews a camera with just a piece of paper in their hand. But at the same time, I can't ignore it because my email inbox and social media and everything is blown up with people asking about this. So I guess it's made that big of an impact. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about it here. All I'm going to do is pull up the blog post that has from Adobe that has it. I'm not going to show you anything else. Uh, you can ask me questions. I thought it'd be fun to have a discussion around it. You can ask me questions, but if it dives any deeper into anything, that's in the blog post, I'm not gonna be able to answer it. So just keep that in mind. But I just thought a discussion would be kind of fun. And honestly, guys, it's just exciting. If you're into this stuff, I get it, it's exciting. And, and even though they announced it's coming out on October 26th, we have a little bit less than a month to, to wait. Um, it can still be fun and exciting to talk about it and think about it and be ready for it. So that, that's all this, this video is meant to do is just have a little bit of fun with it. So I put, you're watching this on YouTube. Um, if you look at the comments and depending if I embed it in my website, I'll put the link to Adobe's blog post um, right in the description there, okay? And what it does is, is they have they have a blog post that talks about it and they actually have about a 90 second video. So it's really fast to watch as well. You can see it in action, but essentially it is, it is masking reimagined inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. So it, the, they'll both be on par with each other. They typically are. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna share my screen and let's just take a look at this blog post that they have here. So I'll share my screen with you guys and we can just go up to the top of it here. So the, the beginning of the post just talks about, you know, when it's coming out. So Adobe typically does new things every, um, or I shouldn't say they do things new things just about every couple of months. Um, every year at Adobe Max, they typically do a big release for uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, and a number of their other programs as well. So this is this is no different. So they're saying these tools will become available on October 26, which is uh, right around when Adobe Max is. Um, from there, and they're included in your Creative Cloud subscription. Again, Lightroom Classic, the cloud version of Lightroom, and Adobe Camera Raw look like they will all get them. And then they talk a little bit about selective adjustments and, and how necessary they are. And if, if you're you know not familiar with these tools, in fact, I'll I'll go ahead and pull up Lightroom Classic just to show you where where we're at right now with these tools. But I've I've always said I've I've for a very very long time have said that I think the selective tools, the brush, the gradient, and the radial gradient. I, I think those are the most important tools inside of Lightroom. If you took everything else away out of the develop module in Lightroom and you left me with those three tools and all of the settings that go with them, I, I could edit any photo that I want because it's actually what I do most of my editing on when I'm, I'm working on my photos there. So I've always said that I thought those were, were the most important tools, but I'll get my screen back up here for you. So we've got, you can see we've got our brush, our radial and our gradient filter. And they're very, very separate tools, right? There's all three separate tools. And when you use them, when you do something on the photo, um, you know, it leaves a little, little circle, a little pin. If I do another one on the photo, it leaves another one. And, and we've for a long time had this complicated way of trying to manage all of these to these little tools inside here. So going back over to the blog post, that's just, they build the case for uh, what that what that means and, and where this can go in the future. But here's where it gets really cool. So they talk about the new improved masking engine um, and they refer to the select subject and the sky replacement feature 
inside of Photoshop. So when we're in Photoshop, we have select subject and we have select sky and we have a full sky replacement feature inside of there as well. So we've got a lot of really powerful selection features inside of there. Well, as they talk about these things, they start talking about, you know, the team thinking about how they can start to incorporate those things into Lightroom. Okay, because you're never, you don't want Lightroom to be Photoshop. Part of Lightroom's power is its simplicity over, over what Photoshop is. But there are so many things we can do with those tools, but we don't have really good selection tools. We don't have really precise selection tools. So they start talking about how, they're, how they want to work with the team to bring in select subject and select sky. Uh, that brings you down as you're looking at the blog post, that brings you down to the video where it's, it's a minute and 42 seconds. It's definitely worth watching because rather than just looking at screen captures of everything, you can actually see this stuff in action. Um, I did I did see somebody, well, I saw a comment somewhere where somebody, you could see the example they use for select subject where it selects this uh, the little kid on the beach there. And I saw some comment by somebody said, I wonder how it does with hair and things like that. And um, all I can say is, is I think you'll be, you'll be really pleased with how it does um, with subjects that don't have perfect lines around them. Um, you know, it's, Again, you just stay tuned for it, but I think I think you'll be very, very pleased with the complexity about it. And by the way, guys, if you got comments or things, just you know, drop them into the comment section and I'll talk about that in just a second. So here's where it gets cool, because you, you actually get to see these things in in action. Um, I you know, I, I joked around about it with, with somebody the other day because I was talking um, we were just talking about Lightroom and it was somebody else that was on the beta team as well. And I was saying how excited I was about some of these changes here and how I kind of couldn't do anything about it, right? All we had to do was wait. And so I'm really happy Adobe decided to sneak peek this because at least I could talk about it a little bit and show, uh, show what they have over here. So this is where we get our first look at what this is. This is actually a panel. So where we're used to inside of Lightroom, where we're used to having to go up here and choose one of the tools. And then the only reference we have are these little dots that appear on the screen over here. What they're giving, uh, they're kind of tilting their, their hand to is that this is a masks panel. You can see this little panel here. I think you can probably even see, yeah, you can see it up here in the develop module. Um, there's another place I thought there was, yeah, there we go. So you can see, look at what, look at what the top right now all right so if i'm inside a lightroom classic you can see what all of my tools look like up here right now under the histogram and now if you look at what they're showing is going to be coming it's a little bit different we have a masking tool that then gives you this whole new panel that they show over here so that's it's again you can get a lot of information from this if uh if you if you read into it so now you've got this whole area um and now, once you're gonna go into this panel, now you choose what tool you want. And I think as you start to read through this, the most, the most powerful part about it is combining all of the tools. In a way, we've been able to do that, but it's been really clunky. I've been able to add a, I've been able to add a gradient adjustment here, and then I've been able to go to the brush and either add or subtract to that gradient adjustment. But once I do that, there's really no, there's really no getting back to what I brushed or the gradient. Now they all become one full adjustment here. Whereas you start to look at what they're doing here and they talk about adding all of these tools together, we're gonna get a lot more control with these things. You can see here, add to the mask with select subject, select sky. So now we're getting some of that select subject and select sky tools inside of there, um, which is, you know, you can see in the, the screen capture that they have here. Let me see if I can blow my browser up to make it a little bit bigger for you. But you can see, if you look at the mask, it's really tiny, but oh gosh, <laughs> I might've gotten myself too, too zoomed in here. Um, oh yeah, I did, I did. Hold on a second, hold on, you're gonna get, there we go. So if you look at the mask, you can see that there's black and white in those areas. So somebody obviously used, there you go, 
select sky you can even see the little sub layer and these are not photoshop layers these are just layers in the sense of giving us a visual representation of something to click on so you can see somebody use that select sky to select that and now you can make adjustments to it um, and then i think one of the most powerful things as we we look through here is let's see if i can get back up to it um, is look at how we can add and subtract from inside of there. And then even that, Adobe even talks about, look at this right here, or select just the ground by inverting the sky. So think about what they did, right? I can do, I can make an adjustment, a local adjustment that selects the sky, right? Can make that local adjustment to select the sky, and then I can invert it and select the foreground. And now I have another adjustment that I can work on the foreground with. So I don't have to go do a whole new selection inside of there. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, and then they go on to talk a little bit about uh, range masks where, you know, lumina it's essentially a luminosity mask. They go on to talk about the range masks and how uh, they've added a lot more power there and how they're gonna do some new things inside of there. And then really it's about improved workflow and organization because as I said, when we're using Lightroom, we, we were forced to have these little pins. And as I start to make more and more adjustments, all I have are these little pins. If this little pin ends up over something that's gray or an area that's harder to see, let me see if I move it, if this little pin ends up somewhere else, then they can become really hard to see because you can have it over an image where there is gray and now you've got this little pin and then you're sitting there wondering where my adjustment is. So it was never a, a, an extremely elegant way. I think the tools are incredibly powerful, but um, I, I think I echo just about everybody's thoughts in that this was never a very elegant way to do it. So I'm glad to see that they're making some changes in there. So the, the rest of it really just talks about um, organization that we will have inside of that panel to be able to organize that. You'll be able to rename those so that uh, you can look at one. Again, I use the term layer very, very loosely because it's not really a layer, um, but you'll re be able to rename that layer. Um, and you know that way you'll be able to visually look at it and know what part of the photo it's working on. And then they finish up with just consistency that it'll be also in Adobe Camera Raw as well as the cloud version of Lightroom. So really powerful stuff. Um, I will say this, it, it was, it, it's taken a big leap forward in Lightroom. I said in the beginning, I think it's, it's probably, it's probably one of the biggest changes. I thought profiles were one of the biggest changes I'd seen in Lightroom since Lightroom came out, or at least since the brush and the gradient were introduced. I think this is, is probably, I, I can't think of a bigger change since Lightroom has come out. And since the brush and gradient were introduced in Lightroom 2, I think. I can't think of a bigger change that, that I've ever seen in Lightroom. There is complexity that goes along with it. You know, if you know how to use Lightroom, you know how to use Lightroom. They're not changing Lightroom. Nothing, nothing is that big of a change, um, but there is some complexity that comes along with this panel, but I think it'll be well worth it. You'll be able to use it as in as simple of a way as you want, and you'll be able to use it in more powerful ways. And I think for a new user, for an existing user, I can see there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. For somebody that's new coming in, you have to admit these little dots on the screen never really made sense. So I think to a new user coming in, a better interface to, to be able to work with these things is, is really a, a, definite, a definite step forward. Uh, let's see here. So I see a couple of comments popping in. Let's take a look here. So uh, Keith says, what do you think about Capture One versus Lightroom? Keith, they're, they are both great programs. Um, I think Capture One is the only raw editor to be on par as good as Lightroom. So you, either way you wanna go, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go Lightroom, number one, I, you know, for somebody concerned about money, it is a whole lot cheaper than Capture One. Um, number two, you get Photoshop. So for 10 bucks a month, you get Lightroom and Photoshop. Why am I gonna go to Capture One that does the same thing? Um, we can argue about what's better or worse. It it's becomes a religious debate about that and, and, and nobody's gonna win it. A Capture One user is gonna plant their feet in the ground and say mine's better and a Lightroom user is gonna do the same. But I keep it in the family. I'm always gonna use Photoshop. Photoshop's such a big part of, of my photo workflow that for me, it's just easier to have Lightroom and Photoshop together. But if you use Capture One and you're happy with it, go for it. It's, uh, I, 
great program. Again, only only the the top two raw editors that are that are out there. Uh, let's see here. Brian says, looks like they're aiming to replicate the masking tools of Capture One has offered for years. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't do that, Brian? Right? Like, you you don't think that there is a feature in Capture One that didn't come from Lightroom first. You don't think every phone company does it. You don't think every car company does it. You don't think every single company in the world sees what a competitor does, sees that customers respond well to it and thinks, hmm, do I not do it and piss off our existing customers? Or do we take this and do we add our own flair to it? And do we make it better? Capture One's not gonna have the select subject and select sky. So Adobe didn't just take what Capture One did, Adobe took what Capture One did, added to it, and made it their own to work in their program. And that's that's common, not just in software, that's common in, in every single other industry anywhere in the entire world. Uh, let's see here, a couple of just Keith and Brian going back and forth. Um, Steven said, will they finally introduce better profiles for the R5? I don't know. Um, I, I don't shoot it, so I'm not aware that there's a profile problem in the R5, but um, I, I haven't seen anything specifically uh, specifically on that one, Stephen. So anyway, uh, it's big news, guys. So stay tuned, October 26th. Uh, I'm sure me and just about every other Lightroom teacher out there will probably have videos uh, showing how to do this stuff. But uh, as I said in the beginning, I think it's just exciting, exciting news, kind of fun to be, uh, to be prepped for and know a little bit more about what's coming. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the broadcast here. Of course, I always check the comments and everything here. So if you do have any questions or thoughts or just wanna jump into the discussion, feel free uh, to just post a comment. So hope you guys have a, a great rest of your day and talk to you again soon.